Hello guys, this week I'm on traveling. So I mainly stays in hotel and I don't have my studio. Therefore, I can do like a, those good looking video, but there was a topic, I was preparing this topic for weeks now, but I didn't have time to record. So when I get this tiny 30 minute window in this hotel room, I thought, okay, what? Who cares the background? I'm going to record the video. Today, we are going to talk about that topic. That is how we can secure Kafka. I have done many Kafka videos. If you not didn't watch my previous Kafka videos, I have a full list of Kafka videos where I teach Kafka from beginning and the difference between Kafka and different other messaging uh, platforms and then how to use Kafka, how internal Kafka works and everything. So if you're not familiar with those, go back and watch those videos and then you can think about this. And there's comments and questions asked is it okay to have an unsecure, unauthenticated Kafka? Simple answer is no. And it is not like no, no. Sometimes it's okay also. Let me explain clearly when to use what when you use the Kafka. In this case, Kafka with the MSK, AWS managed service for Kafka, what are the security options you have and when to use what. So when you come to AWS MSK, we have a four type of authentication. But when you say four, it's not actually four, it's a three. The fourth one is unauthenticated access. You can see really say it's authenticated, four ways to authenticate. So first one is a TLS based authentication, which means you can do a transport level authentication. The second one is SASL SCRAM authentication, also known as SCAM authentication. And third one is SASL IAM authentication. And the fourth one is obviously unauthenticated. So let's see when to use what. First one is a TLS authentication. When you use a TLS authentication, TLS secure communication between Kafka clients and brokers using certificates. So you have a Kafka broker and then you have a Kafka client. The communication between these two will secure on a TLS level using a certificate. So encrypts data in a transit certificate issued by trusted body or as a MSK or as a AWS. And then uh, you, you can use those certificate on the client side and then you can secure this uh, communication. So you can use a mutual SSL or also known as a MTLS. So that way the client also need to configure with the certificate also the server. So in that case, you can trust this. But keep in mind, if you have hundreds of consumers, then this configuration between each consumer, especially for mutual TLS, it won't be easy task and onboarding a new cons new consumer would be painful thing. So you need to decide uh, whether you really want to use this. When you can use this, uh, especially if you are, if your data is so concerned to secure in transit as well. So then we have to use this and also suitable for internal network with the mutual TLS. And if also when you have, when you don't have much consumers and also when you don't have a con, uh, like frequent consumer onboarding or offboarding, then this is fine because let's say you have a 10 consumers, you one time do the configuration, these 10 consumers stay for years. But if you frequently need consumers onboard or offboard, then I don't think this will be good enough for you. Then second one is username password based authentication, also known as SASL, SCRAM authentication, also known as SCAM authentication. So how this works is you can configure like a username password to the particular Kafka instance. When it comes to AWS, how they do this, uh, you when you create the cluster, I mean, if you won't uh, put a comment, I'll show you how to do it. So when you configure the cluster, you can use the SSL SCAM authentication and then you need to use a secret manager on the AWS account. So there you can create a username and password for your cluster. And then you come back to the uh, MSK config configuration window and then you set that uh, secret manager configuration, whatever you configured, and then you uh, provision the cluster. Once you do that, uh, actually you have to first provision the cluster and then map the uh, security or secret manager. Then once you do that, when you connect to your Kafka broker, then you can use the username and password for your cluster. In that case, you can have multiple username and passwords and I mean, you can customize this uh, whenever you want. So when to use this, especially when you have external facing uh, consumers or producers, and then also when you have a frequent consumer onboarding or offboarding. Then third one is IAM based authentication, especially if your cluster is used by some other uh, resources, which is provisioned on the AWS, which has IAM role, access management role. And then you can configure your cluster to use that. In that case, you can get IAM policy to your uh, consumer and then uh, that policy will apply to your cluster. For example, let's say you are 
uh, use lambda to consume your or produce to your cluster or something like that, then both are AWS resources. Then it's the easiest way is uh, IAM based authentication. And the other one is unauthenticated access. In that case, this is usually you can say this is a way of authenticate your cluster. This is not the way of authenticate the cluster. And when you, you when to use this specifically, see this one. So you have a microservice VPC and then you have a MSK or as Kafka configured on the same VPC. In other side, you have a Kubernetes, which is the same VPC. Then whatever your producer consumer traffic only goes through this VPC, right? It doesn't go outside the VPC or you don't get the traffic from outside the VPC. So there are no ingress traffic. So therefore, this type of situation is okay. Uh, you use unauthenticated access. I mean, if you can use authenticated cluster, that's best. But even though you don't use it, it is not a huge uh, security risk or something like that. Some people like, can say, yeah, there is a risk. For example, if someone provision other EC2 instances on the same VPC or uh, some other resource on the same VPC, if that uh, resource get compromised, then obviously your MS get, get compromised. No doubt about it. But as long as you can assure that you don't have such a scenario, then this type of setup would be good as well. So then you have, uh, like we discussed four, actually out of four, three is the authentication mechanism. One is a TLS, especially when you want to client uh, secure authentication, if you, if, especially if you want to have a transport level authentication. And then second one, you can use user and password based authentication. And third one is IAM based authentication. Another one is no authentication, okay? So now, if you need me to explain how to do this, I will do in a different video. So if you have any comment, any questions, please comment below. And then probably next week, I'll see you in a full-blown tech video again. Okay. Then till that, stay safe and take care.